Hi everyone, my name is Andrew. Uh, today I want to talk to you about expectations. It's something that I, I guess I, I learnt this lesson quite some time ago. Just looking at a lot of the time, the problems we have in life, um, just for what we create for ourselves, but also we, we, um, we have with other people. So, as I've said many times before, we only really have control over the, ourselves and the way we look at things and think about things. And that's not always easy. It doesn't mean we can always just uh, easily come back to a state of joy <laughs> after going through some incidents and events with um, just with life or people. But to give you an example of what I'm talking about here, that two things generally happen. Uh, well, in, in context of people, people often have expectations upon us, but we also generally tend to do the same thing, unless we're aware of it. Uh, and even then, if we're aware of it, we can still <laughs> sleep up a little bit until we realize it's, uh, we've created some problems for ourselves through having expectations. Now, it's not to say that we should never have expectations, but we should also understand that you know life doesn't always go to plan. And... To give you a bit more of an example of what I'm talking about here in terms of expectations, I remember many, many years ago, I was talking to a, um, a bouncer at a, uh, a pub. It was actually quite a long time ago, actually. And I can't remember how we got in this big conversation about this, but I was explaining this to him and said, if you think about it, um, I mean, I'm going to talk about this from a particularly you know, Western point of view. I mean, I know it applies to other countries, but... Christmas time, a lot of the time, in um, a lot of Western countries particularly, people, families generally want to have Christmas dinner or Christmas lunch or something like that. And there'll be expectation, generally, let's say by parents, that um, that you've got to come to Christmas lunch or Christmas dinner. There's no kind of asking you, would you like to come? You have an option not to come. It's like, no, I expect you to be here. That's, it might not say it in those words, but there's an expectation that you need to be there, your family, you need to be there. Now, that's an expectation that people put upon um, ourselves, us. You know, I, I'm, I'm personally not a, a big one for um, celebrating in that, in that way uh, around Christmas time with going to those sort of events. And I realized that many years ago when I realized the expectations that were put upon me. And I thought, well, you know, that's really quite unfair. So what happens then is someone now is putting pressure on you or multiple people sometimes putting pressure on you because they expect you to behave in a way that will make them feel better, that'll, that'll meet their needs. And now what happens is if their needs aren't met, now they'll project it onto you as well and say, basically, you're the bad person because you aren't doing what they expect you to do. And that's really not healthy at all. Okay, that's not fair. And... Likewise, we must ensure we don't do the same thing on other people. Now, as I said, there is a, a level of expectation that we should have at times in life, but also in the back of our minds, always being aware that, well, nature of how people are and, and life as well, it doesn't always go that way. So if we don't get our needs met by our expectations, essentially we're doing that to ourselves um, in one way or another. So, now, this is an interesting topic because you could really branch out here that, as I was saying, that overall here, expectations, <laughs> they are the big troublemaker in life, um, whether, we, whether people doing it to us or us doing it to others or, or life in general, that through expectations, when the expectation isn't met, now we're creating our own suffering. So, what I was going to say just a moment ago was, if you think about it in terms of like a relationship, there's generally an expectation um, when you, in an intimate relationship particularly, um, you know, whether it's marriage or, or just a devoted relationship, that if someone's telling you something, that they, they're a certain way and all that sort of stuff, or you have a reasonable level of expectation they're going to mostly behave in a certain way, that they're, if they've not shown any kind of cheating aspects before, well, you'd... Um, I mean, you'd hope that they wouldn't do that anyway. <laughs> I think most people would feel that way. But if then somebody changes from that, 
um, and and despite the fact that they've been telling you oh, I'm not a cheater, I'd never do anything like that, and then and you and you and you and you've lived maybe for some time not seeing that, and then they change and start doing that. Well, I don't think that's an unfair ex expectation to think that that person, you know, wouldn't do that or shouldn't do that. However, still, the, the way life is, life does change, and you know, so if we do confront something like that in our lives, it's like, well, yes, it's very hurtful, and we could. Put this down to a sense of feeling of betrayal and betrayal to me is something where we have opened up our heart our trust to somebody and it's not something we should just do willy-nilly with anybody so when we do that we feel a, a sense of comfort to be able to open up and feel safe with someone and then they take that trust in a sense um, and do something that that breaks that well, uh, then we, we have a lot of hurt. Now, that's not an unfair expectation that when we've built trust with someone and then they they turn on us, and I, I do call that betrayal, um, because, you know, a lot of the time you're just, you're not thinking that they're going to do something like that. Well, we do get hurt, but at the same time, we had this expectation that they would never do that. Now, is that fair or not? I <laughs> I think that's just a, a part of life, and, and it does hurt, and it's not uncommon that these things do happen. Just a moment. I'm going to pause this for a moment. Just, uh, somebody walking past here. Just a moment. Okay, we're back again. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this can certainly happen in life. Now, what I really want to get to in this video is talking about being very aware of these expectations and if we're having them at some point and thinking about, well, what can we do if we're creating our own suffering through them? So, as I said, we have expectations, often, of other people, um, of ourselves, and of life in general. And, now, I'm not saying not to, not, not to have, uh, you know, expectations of goodness and, and greatness and joy in life. Now, I know some people go through some pretty traumatic things for extended periods of time in their lives, and it can be very hard when you're going through a lot of that for a long periods of time to feel that there is any kind of sense of joy. <laughs> you know, that there is expectations of joy to come from life. That's, that's understandable. But what other expectations are we having? About things, about life, about other people, about ourselves. So, as I've said already about in terms of intimate relationships, we can have expectations of our, of our partners to, to be a certain way, um, or, or to not be a certain way. And... It's a really interesting topic because we've got to sort of balance this out somewhat about, I mean, looking at what it, what is a fair or reasonable expectation, I suppose, and one that perhaps perhaps is a little unfair, but also, I guess this comes into communication that if we had a what we, what we may deem as a reasonable expectation on our partners, for instance, and they don't meet that, well, we need to also convey that perhaps and express that if we can. And if we're dealing with someone who's reasonable, well, then we can find a compromise. However, that's not always the case, and people are at different places in their terms of their awareness and consciousness and maturity. And that can create, you know, a lot of tension between people. And this is not an easy thing to... It's, it's quite complex in everybody's individual lives about us then weighing up, well, what do we do with these situations? Do we look and say... Um, I'll keep this person in my life despite the ongoing disappointments, um, whatever they may be. I mean, do we need to readjust our expectations? And if so, are we actually are we taking away from our, our own values by doing so? I mean, this is a, a very indi individual thing that we need to look at and, and, and think about. And it is a quite a broad topic in this regard, but I'm really, I suppose, in this video, perhaps bringing this to your attention if you're not already aware. Because if you do really think about the amount of expectations we have in life and about life, and when they're not met, how we generally feel, you know, we feel quite sad and we don't feel great when, we're, when our expectations aren't met. So the way I go about it is I'm very aware of that, that I have a reasonable level of expectation in some areas, but I'm also, back of my mind, thinking, well, this is the way that life is and human nature in general, well, that, that may not be met, that expectation. So then what do I do with that? Well, I I suppose, I mean, it's going to, I suppose it'll be similar in all, all contexts, but it'll be a case-by-case -case basis, I suppose, depending on what it is. 
but often though in general when expectations aren't met there's not a lot we can really do about that a lot of the time because it may be another person or people um, who haven't who haven't met that expectation in whatever way and and they're probably not going to a lot of the time and we can't really force anybody to um, to do anything <laughs> they don't want to do and the same with life we, we can't we can't force things and we can try we can tire ourselves out but fighting life sometimes really not going to get us anywhere so this is coming back to what I was saying earlier that all we really have control over is ourselves so then when we realize our expectations aren't met then we need to put that in context and perhaps change our perspective and look at things a little differently think okay well I would have liked that thing to have gone my way and that but it hasn't so how am I going to look at this now so this comes from I suppose a point of reflection and understanding that well we can try and understand other people's points of view you know why they may have acted or not acted a certain way okay fair or not fair it doesn't matter we're not trying to make a judgment on this at all we're just looking at ourselves really because that's all we have control over you know that all that we really can do is and what we should be doing really is working on ways to not throw ourselves off center with inside ourselves because a lot of things happen in life and we don't want to be just dragged along by life and, and thrown down and all that sort of stuff I mean it, it can happen anyway but um, we want to sort of minimize that as much as possible and the way we do that a lot of the time is through an aspect of understanding and that we are often creating our own suffering in many ways our own thinking and how we, our perspective on things and we get caught up in the injustices of life because a lot of the time life is not very fair in many ways and particularly from a point of view of the, the human experience that what we look at as fair and, uh, and not fair seems to be that there seems to be a lot of unfairness in, in life and whether it's just in general relations with others or particularly when we see it if it goes to court in any kind of way dealing with the legal system that's often grossly unfair and the idea of justice I think anybody who's who's been around any of these sort of things would see that there's that's one area where people often shake their heads when they have any kind of first introduction to the court system in any kind of way the amount of unfairness that can be there in whatever context there's a lot of unfairness there so again we could say that there was an expectation there that it would be fair and just but it's not is it and that can really aggravate people get you very angry very upset but really all we can do is say well that it wasn't a, I would have liked it would have been this way I had an expectation that it would be just but now I've learned a lesson that it wasn't so now all I have control over is how I deal with that so when we look at these things, we, I, I personally, like if I see something that's not unjust, and I was funnily enough talking about something that happened to me years ago, many years ago, that was very unfair, and uh, actually dealing with <laughs> a little bit to do with the, uh, the legal system to some degree. Um, I think I've mentioned in a video maybe before that um, I was uh, hit by a car, I think it was around 2000, early 2006, from memory, and now I was just riding my bike, and the, and the person... I was riding this way and the person came and hit me like a, a T-bone because they weren't paying attention and I actually saw them before they hit me and I saw how they're looking and they weren't paying attention and they they cleaned me up and I hit their car rolled over the windscreen and onto the road and I cracked my helmet and everything so lucky I was wearing that just, just a moment I'm just going to pause this for a moment for that noise over there so hopefully that stopped now I it's funny I parked here thinking oh this place is really quiet I've never seen anyone down here before and Today there's been cars coming down here, now we've got a blower going and people walking past. I thought it's just uh, <laughs> it's one of those funny events. So I was talking about the car. So I got hit by a car and I rolled over and ambulance came and all that sort of stuff. Now that's not the point of the story. The point is that I, what happened was I was I knocked out briefly um, when, I, when I was hit. And I do recall vaguely the police officer who attended asking me questions and I was out of it because I was on whatever the drugs they'd given me at the time for the pain and everything else I wasn't with it I had no idea what I was talking about but I got a fine <laughs> I got a fine in the mail for failing to give way now for whatever reason I'm not sure maybe I said something that wasn't correct when I was under the influence of all the um, painkillers they had me on the ambulance um, 
or maybe the police officer was just didn't like cyclists we have that you know perhaps and uh, anyway looking at the situation it was very unfair and I was going to contest it um, but I was not in a very good state mentally and all that from the um, well, somewhat traumatized at the time and didn't have my chance to have my say in a sense I um, anyway I mean I could have gone but I just I just wasn't up to it and uh, and it was and they only had a brief period of time to do it and I just wasn't able to so basically what happened from that then was I ended up getting pursued for damages to the vehicle for years <laughs> right for all these damages after the guy basically destroyed my bike and uh, and I had a lot of injuries which I've still been you know, dealing with over the years but they've gotten better um, again I've mentioned in other videos about my diet and that's helped a lot so anyway so my expectation was there would be a fairness in the whole system and it wasn't fair so all I could really do rather than get myself angry which I did early on I was younger I got very fired up about it and I thought well that's not changing anything you know this has happened and um, and I although there was some avenues to begin with early on to, to, to deal with it I didn't wasn't taking those on but even if I did um, chances are I probably wouldn't have probably won anyway um, so my expectations there would have been a level of fairness there but there wasn't so all I could really do then was just say well this is how, how it is and um, and go about my way of how I'm going to process that and just accept that rather than keep holding on to it and just reliving it in, in a sense we ruminate often on unfairness you know because expectations that are not met we feel unfair all of the time and we can ruminate on that and that can get very strong sometimes too that oh, I did this for this person and all this and blah blah and they didn't do that for me and look at all the things I've done and it, I expected they do this one thing for me considering all the things I've done as an example <laughs> and then we create our own suffering and what we really need to look at really and realize is that as I said we've only got control over ourselves and I'm not to say that there isn't unfairness that people shouldn't perhaps uh, do wrong by us or they you know they, or they should make some effort in other ways but these are often lessons too for us to realize that if we see particularly patterns in our lives when the same thing comes up again again a lot of the time that's showing us somewhere where we perhaps need to be healed we need to do some healing on ourselves to realize that we've we've got a pattern going here and we need to change that or we're going to keep experiencing the same thing and that's often what patterns are uh, ones that we don't enjoy particularly actually um, good patterns well that's not a not a problem nothing to be solved there but the, the ones that we're not enjoying where we get taken advantage of people mistreat us whatever it is there's some something is going on inside ourselves that we need to heal um, it's a belief system we have that we need to heal otherwise we'll keep repeating it and that's all life's doing a lot of the time it's just showing us again and again lessons and uh, we're just got to be smart to smart enough to or wise enough to see that for what it is and that's why we see a lot of things in life that repeat we should just stop and think what is it I need to do with inside myself what is it I'm believing about myself and life for me to keep attracting this into my life um, that's another topic I suppose in itself but coming back to the expectations that so as I said we, a lot of the time when they're not met we, we suffer <clears throat> So it's really, again, as I say, it's a perspective thing. How, how can I look at this differently? How can I how can I alleviate the suffering that I'm creating for myself? What is it that I feel is, is wrong about the situation? Am I being unfair by having such strong expectations on life? And you might feel, no, I'm not. However, again, I'm just going to reiterate this, is that even if you don't think it's unfair expectations, that it just shows you how life is a lot of the time that even if it's not unfair if it is it still doesn't mean that it's going to be fulfilled so now we're going to find a way just to let go of that and relax about that situation I suppose I've had a lot of years of experience doing this so I'll have to really it seems very automatic to me most of the time now to just to be able to just not be attaching myself to outcomes just let things go a lot of the time in our minds we have an idea of an outcome how we'd like things to be how we'd like it to look and there's nothing wrong with that but it's our attachment to the outcome where the problems come so again how can you personally if you think about that what is it you need to let go of it's a condition to keeping 
keeping yourself out of suffering, you know, to keep a sense of peace with inside yourself, peace of, a sense of harmony with inside yourself, even joy. If you if that's coming, if you're taking yourself away from that some way, it is you really who's doing that, mind you. I'm not saying certain events aren't a catalyst um, to how you're feeling, but we've we've got to take the reins, so to speak, and, and guide our, our ourselves, our minds, our thoughts. To bring us back to a place of of comfort with inside ourselves again it's a i've said in other videos can, it's conditions we condition how we feel and how we think ourselves we do that by the way we're thinking and we have conditions on in a way that hold us back so as i said we might have say this idea that this this need needs to be met in this way an expectation and it really is a condition that's holding you back from a sense of peace and joy. And sometimes it can be fair, and other times I've seen before, not even just from myself, but other people, that it's it can be somewhat very unrealistic. <laughs> and really, I mean, I make these videos because I'm trying to, in different topics and different ways, convey to people the power that we really have within us, inside ourselves, and the only power we have is with, with inside ourselves, is to to not allow anything outside ourselves to to affect us, to bring us into a place of discomfort within ourselves, within our hearts, our minds, our lives. And that's not always an easy thing. It doesn't mean you just have this awareness now like I'm talking about and all, it's, it fixes everything. It's often something we need to cultivate. We have to cultivate a positive lifestyle, a positive life, a happy life, a joyful life. We cultivate that. It doesn't mean all of a sudden we think that and all of a sudden it magically happens. You know, by the end of the day or tomorrow, we've had a lifetime of, I'll call it wrong thinking a lot of the time, because we haven't often been taught by anyone um, in our lives about how to look at things differently within our society. Our society has a often a very, very immature way of looking at things, and and often it's it's very self-centered. And it's not to say that we shouldn't take care of ourselves in different ways, but again, this is where a lot of problems do do, do arise in, uh, in our, in, well, not just our lives, but other people's lives. And then we have this mess of people projecting things onto one another about what their needs are and expectations upon us and vice versa. And I know predominantly in this video so far, I've been talking about um, from our own perspective, our own expectations, but you know, what about the other side too, with people putting expectations upon us? I mean, that can be very, very imprisoning upon ourselves. And especially, especially we have issues with um, well, codependency or, or people pleasing. Um, now, there's nothing wrong to try and help people, but I mean, a lot of people out there will try and take advantage of people in many ways, whether it's conscious or unconscious. But we need to be conscious of ourselves and our own behaviors to not allow people to take advantage of us. You know, I've had that. I've always try to be quite generous with people and I, I still am but it's, it's learning to be somewhat discerning you know and that that takes sometimes some tricky lessons you know tough ones sometimes we've got to go through a little bit of pain sometimes to learn those lessons I I certainly have but to think about think about it in your own life who do you think is having unfair expectations upon yourself uh, where they I mean some of these things can be very toxic too I mean People put conditions on, on, on us uh, in a sense of you, you, you're, um, you can't be my friend unless you do X, Y, Z. Um, if you don't do this, it means you don't love me. Uh, you know, these are these are not healthy things for people to put things like that upon you. That's it's um, it's it's beyond expectations. There's an aspect there, however, that's very unhealthy and it's it's uh, very controlling behaviour. And that's what expectations often can be. They can be, uh, in a sense, whether it's conscious or unconscious, um, a way of people needing to control a situation or ourselves so that we can feel a certain way. And it's really not a healthy way to go because, as I've said, a lot of the time we don't have control over things. Like, you may have an expectation that you move to a wonderful area and you have this beautiful home and everything just goes just right. But then things happen in the world, don't they? You know, war could strike and, I mean, you could win a, a lot of money, a big lotto, and then 
the next day there could be a massive nuclear war or something. And it's like, well, um, the expectation you had of winning that money and having a certain life, well, that's gone. That's gone now, hasn't it? When there's a big war thing, that's uh, you may still have the money, but you know, what use is it when there's when now everything's sort of locked down and there's limitations on what you can do with that money? And it, it's so there's, I mean, that's a it's not not everybody's going to apply to that, but a bit of an extreme <laughs> example. But it's it's along the lines of everything in life that you know a you know a big cyclone could come through and and uh, destroy. A lot of things in your life and you had an expectation uh, perhaps you lived in an area where they never had anything like that before and you thought it was a safe place to be but then something comes through it'd be a flood or whatever it may be and it turns everything upside down and uh you know I've, i find it really interesting in life about the sort of expectations people do have about life which are somewhat very unfair um well on, i suppose on themselves but also on on life in general to think that things aren't going to happen it's again it's it's unrealistic and that's what a lot of expectations are they're unrealistic uh, in a lot of ways as i said you've only got control over yourself now there's nothing to say going back to the christmas lunch or dinner example before to think i would like someone you know i would like my family members to join me i'd like i'd really enjoy them to come with me and and share this meal or whatever it may be that's that's okay to to have that that feeling of that but you should never expect that of anybody, especially, I mean, so many people never ask anybody their their opinion. Uh, would you like to come to this? They just expect you to be there or expect you to do this. And that's not fair. That's that's really, it's not fair and it's un, uh, somewhat unhealthy for both for both parties, really. So I just make this video to bring this to your attention about expectations. But what are your expectations in life? You know, I mean, I'm not saying not to have positive expectations of life. You should. But you should also have an aspect of being realistic in the sense that, well, okay, I, I can do this thing and I can work towards this and I'd, I'd like that. But also knowing that, well, sometimes things happen and something may happen. It may not work out the way I want it to and you may have a level of disappointment with that. But what have you changed to change your idea about that? Say, so, look, I have a, a positive expectation of life, but also have, well, it may not work out why I would like it or at all however I'm just going to enjoy enjoy the whole thing anyway that's the sort of way I look at life I said well I'm going to try this thing and and that thing and I've had a lot of I've had a lot of things not work out I've had a lot of failures in life I can tell you with uh, businesses and all sorts of things and it's not not from lack of effort not from lack of trying not from lack of ability or skill or anything it's just this just a number of factors that have come up and it and it has been disappointing because I have had a, a level of expectation thinking it will definitely work. <laughs> and it's not wrong to have optimism. And it's good to be optimistic about things. But I think that's probably the best way to have a sense of optimism. But also a sense of, well, I've, you know, I've given things the best shot. And if things don't work out, well, I've done the best I can. You know, and that's sometimes just being realistic about life. That well, sometimes things just don't work out. And sometimes we just need to learn the lesson and, and maybe try again. And even then, sometimes things, you know, may not work out and we can try another path. But to not get caught up in this definite outcome, this definite, I expect it to work out and look something like this. Or, And I said, I, I'm not trying to take away from a sense of optimism or trying in life. You should. But don't be so rigid that you're stuck on this idea that it's going to look this way or that way. Or it's definitely going to work this time around. And <clears throat> it's good to be optimistic. Absolutely. And you should. And you should Follow what you really believe in, and and and, uh, and feel within your heart what what really lightens you up. No doubt about it. But I, I look at things in life now just to do it for the, the sense of enjoyment. You now I do a lot of creative things, and uh, you know, and I just like to do them for the sake of doing them. Um, and that's that's I think the best way to be. That look, if you can if you can earn some money doing something you love, well, that's fantastic. But you know, it's better to just be present. And enjoying the experience of life because you know I sometimes contemplate on this thinking you know I could die tomorrow and if I, if I look back and think you know what I'm really happy even with all the great challenges particularly over the last few years I've got a great life and I'm very happy with it you know I'm really happy with what I've experienced even the really tough times reflecting upon it I think you know what I have still found a way to be very content in a sense, humble with what I what I do have, 
Um, not that I don't still try and strive above where I'm at. Um, and it's not so much the material needs, but it's um, there is an aspect of that. But it's it's just the um, the adventure and enjoyment of life. That I don't need things to be a certain way to find that happiness and joy. You know, I can find that within my side myself. But despite the outcome, yes, I may like something to be a certain way and I may have some expectation that it will come out that way but even if it doesn't I come to think well you know sometimes it's the way things are and you know what I'm grateful that I got to try and, and do the things that I enjoyed and that in itself was was reward enough or is reward enough and same with people you know we, we may have it's particularly let's say in intimate relationships we may be dating someone or seeing someone for a little while and have a wonderful expectation of a, of a future together but but also think in the back of our minds that, well, listen, it is, you know, I'm enjoying this for what it is now and I would really like things to be this way, but anything can happen. It doesn't mean the person's going to leave you for somebody else, but, and I don't obviously wish this on anybody, but look, sometimes things happen. Sometimes, you know, our loved ones, their lives are taken, taken um, well before we would like them to be. Um, and a lot of things can happen and that's very hurtful in itself. Um, and that's just the nature of life, that, that things happen. And we have to accept that, you know. We can have a wonderful set expectation of life in that way, but we also have to accept that sometimes things happen in life that can be painful, you know. And really, the ongoing suffering, I mean, we have the initial thing, we have pain in life, but then the suffering that comes with that, to some degree, is, is, is what we do to ourselves. And it's, it's really from our perspective and the way we're looking at things, our own thinking about it. And we do have control over that. It doesn't mean automatically that if a loved one passes on, that we just think, well, it's my perspective, I'll, I'll change that, now I'm happy. No, no, there's obviously a process that's a part of the human experience too, to, you know, to go through various emotions, whether they be really uplifting ones or ones that bring us feeling somewhat down. Um, obviously, depression's, you know, at the... At the, at the extreme end of like sadness, for instance, <clears throat> and it's somewhat more involved in that than people often realize, but I'm not going to get into that in this video right at the moment. But we, we do have a level of control, um, and we can work towards that little saying, we can cultivate that, and a lot of the time we have a, false, a faulty way of thinking about life and perspective, and often that's learned through our upbringing, a society and uh, and often another way that comes about is because we often are looking at other people's lives and, and comparing ourselves you know so we see they can happen on social media um, often it does people looking at other people's lives comparing their lives to that and another way often it's just day-to-day -day. people look, driving around looking at things looking at people's houses um, I mean the word coveting it's a biblical term and I think it's very, very useful to think about things that is we covet. We look at what others have and think we don't have it. And therefore we think we're, we're missing out and we can't have that level of happiness because we have a faulty perception that we need those things to feel a certain way. And that's just not true. It's not to say we shouldn't perhaps, you know, uh, work toward those things that we, that we feel the need. But, but always remembering that there's nothing wrong with going towards things, but we should never have those as the object of our of our peace, our harmony, our joy. That that expectation that happiness is going to come through things outside ourself is an incorrect uh, perception, you know. And it'll set, and most people do this, and it'll set you up for a potential problem in the future. Because what we're saying when we do that is, if I have this thing, now my condition of happiness is met. But what happens once that's now removed or is removed at some point? Are you now saying that you cannot be happy anymore? You need that condition to be re-met. Um, so that's not a that's not a great place to be for any of us to do something like that, whether it be a person, a thing, a place, job, or anything. That we need to find that within outside ourselves. And I've said many times, it's really how we look at look at life, how we think about things. That realizing that, as I've said this, I think in another video, that when people are in intimate relationships, um, you know that that new love. <laughs> When we, when we first meet someone and we feel so, so much love and joy and it's top of the world, that wonderful feeling. Now, often we make a, a faulty perception to think this new person we've met 
has given that to us. But the truth is, have they given you those feelings? That, you know, did they give them to you in a in a box, in a in a in a jar, <laughs> in a bottle, or anything like that? No, they didn't. All that happened is when you have met this person, and as you're getting to know them, um, whatever it is, the connection, the energy between you, you one another, what it has done, or that person has done is they have drawn forth what was already within inside yourself. So that joy, that falling in love with life, that wonderful euphoric feeling is already within you. Now, you don't actually need that person to activate it within you. Uh, it's wonderful because it's certainly, some people can certainly get our hearts fluttering <laughs> and uh, a big smile on our faces and a lot of joy. But we don't actually need that person to give us that. Because we can see that when relationships may not work out and that person's gone and people go, oh, that, I feel sad now because that person's no longer here and that. And yes, that is, there is certainly a feeling of that and there's other aspects to it while we feel this way. But overall, I'm, I'm coming back to this, that it's not the person that gave us this to, be, to begin with. It was already within us. And you can find that with inside yourself. Any of the emotions, whether it be hatred and anger or, or love and joy and bliss they're already within you and this is why I really enjoy just spending time in silence and meditation and feeling these emotions and sitting there with them so it's like tuning into the frequency of of joy or bliss you sit there with it it's um if you think about it in terms of a radio station that or a tv station that when you change the dial or or turn the knob or whatever it is on the radio for instance you'll by changing the frequency, you'll get you know, different music coming through, different talk show programs, whatever it is. There's so many radio stations, and all you've done is change the frequency to tune into that. Okay, Now, that's no different with us, that when we change the frequency of our thinking, our perception, uh, what we're focusing on, focusing on, we can change our frequency our, our, or change the channel within our, inside ourselves to a different thing. So that's really what we're focusing on, and we can feel that, and it... It can take some practice to begin with, because most people probably haven't done anything like this before. But you can even just think, what does it feel like? What do I imagine it would feel like if I was completely content? If I was just sitting here right now, just all my needs are met, as far as I could think of them. But then I'm not talking about, I mean, yes, the material aspect too, but I just felt a total sense of completeness. How would you feel? Wouldn't you feel relaxed in your body? Your body would just be so relaxed, you wouldn't be tense. All your shoulders would just be you know, loose, and your neck would be all loose, and your body, and you'd probably feel a sense of, you know, wonderful, uh, I don't know if anyone's felt this before who's watching this, but when you meditate all the time, you can feel this wonderful sense of energy coming through your body at times, and it's an uh, amazing sense of uplifting joy and bliss at times, but you can feel that, that when you're content, you can just have a smile on your face, because there's nothing that you need, you realize outside of yourself, you think, where I am right now is perfect. You know, and I know some people might say where I'm at right now is not perfect, all that. And I know with mental health issues too, it's it's not as easy as that. We need to work on that. We can. It's a little a little harder. It's a bit like um, you know, we're wanting to climb to the top of a mountain, and you know, some people are already at halfway up and they've got to go a bit. <laughs> uh, but when we've got these mental health issues, we're not just at the bottom of the mountain; we're even further away, and we've got a it's a bit of a journey, but to get to the top. But we can do it. I've done it and I know you can too, but we cultivate it, and we cultivate a lot of this through the actions and behaviors that we make each and every day, the choices that we make each and every day, to stop and ask ourselves, in this situation, is this, going to, this choice um, going to serve me and make me feel a little better or, or not, or make me feel worse? And that could be a simple thing like you're going to get some food uh, for lunch, for instance, and you might say, well, I'm really feeling very addicted and craving those, you know, those chips over there, those hot chips that have, you know, been <laughs> deep fried and they're covered in all sorts of gravy or whatever it is people like in that regard. Uh, or I could have this uh, more celery, salad type thing. And in most people's minds, salad doesn't really, it's not very appealing. And to be honest, I can understand why, because most people don't make a good salad. Um, but the thing is here, there's two choices there. You could take the one that's the choice of, oh, that's really tasty, but however, overall for your physical health, it's not going to be great. And in fact, that also therefore affects your mental health. And um, so that's one choice. Or you can have the choice of a salad, which may not be as tasty. However, 
uh, it's going to be more beneficial for you. So in most cases in life, we always have two choices to make. One that's going to be a service and one that's not going to service. And that's pretty much as simple as that a lot of the time we become aware of that. And then it's how do we you know, work through that because we have a lot of habits. We have addictions, particularly to food. Um, so it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's becoming an aware. And I, I'm just hoping to share this awareness with all of you in this context so you can think about it in your own terms of your own life. So anyway, I'm going to leave this here. Uh, as always, I, I enjoy creating this and I hope to share you know, more content with, with you uh, more regularly. But it's something I, I really hope that you spend some time thinking about is about expectations that you're having upon yourself, upon life, and also who or what is putting expectations upon you because that can be a really big burden. And it's not easy to walk in our truth because to walk in your truth can sometimes be a very lonely path and it takes courage. And courage doesn't mean an absence of fear. It means you have the fear and you, you still move forward anyway. And uh, so I know it's not an easy thing. I'm going to leave this here. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And if anybody wants to uh, work with me one on one with anything, uh, all my details are in the description below. And I look forward to, to reading any comments that you may have. And I just wish you all a wonderful day, wonderful night, wherever you are. And I'm just so thankful that I have this opportunity to share each day or every couple of days with you uh, what I feel maybe of, of use to you in some way.